Done. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody still sleepy? Yes. Ay, ay, ay. Ava, good morning. Say good morning, Ava. Where's Ava? There is Ava. Say good morning, Ava. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Good morning. It's Tuesday. Oh, sorry. It's Friday. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up with my dates. It's Friday morning and today is June 28th and it is the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. Okay, very good. That's a very important feast. Okay, so today we're going to read the gospel from St. Luke chapter 15 verses 3 to 7. Hmm? Okay, Jesus addressed this parable to the Pharisees and the scribes. So today... We're hearing a parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders, like that, with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need for repentance. So here we have a very beautiful image of Jesus Jesus being the good shepherd and, and Jesus being uh, uh, the one who has uh, that sacred heart, which we celebrate in today's feast. Jesus uses the image that his audience was very familiar with during his time, okay? where uh, herding sheep was something very common in the neighborhood. They would, you would see everybody in the mountains of Jerusalem in the hills of Jerusalem, uh, you'll find shepherds and sheep. And, and there are many of them. In this case, our Lord gives a number, a hundred of them. And he says that the good shepherd, somebody who cares for his flock, and not somebody who's like a hireling, just being paid minimum wage in order to take <coughs> care of sheep. Okay? What he says of them is that, well, a good one, a good shepherd, will look out for that one out of 99. He will go out of his way to find that one that might have gotten lost, that might have gotten <clears throat> entangled in some bush, or whose foot might have been trapped somewhere. That's why he got left behind. Or because he was very curious, right? Wandered off for a while and then forgot that, okay, forgot his path and didn't know how to go back to the rest of the flock so mm -hmm. jesus tells us about the story of the good shepherd who when he finds that one that gets lost mm -hmm. there's plenty of jubilation plenty of uh, rejoicing over that one sheep that got lost and he invites his neighbors to celebrate with him okay? it's kind of like you know maybe us if we had lost a toy and uh we couldn't find it among the uh, bins of toys that we have. And all of a sudden, we find that little doll. That, ah, I've been looking for you for a long time, right? Then you're, you're very happy you found it, right? Or, or that matchbox or, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever toy it is that you might have thought you lost. Huh? Or a Lego piece. or <laughs> You don't know what a matchbox is anymore. Oh boy, those were our toys. But anyway, a Lego piece or something like that, right? And you happen to find it, well, you're very happy, right? Very happy and you want to, you, you practically jump up and down for joy having found it. The same thing is true with this good shepherd. For them, it was sheep. Once one of them gets lost, they go out and hunt for it and look for it and care for it and rejoice when they find it. So today, our Lord gives us this image to think about because this is the image of himself. This is the image of 
the compassionate Jesus. This is the image of the compassionate God, whose feast we celebrate today as uh, the Sacred Heart. So let's try to understand this. What does compassion mean? Let's say a vocabulary test. What does compassion mean? What does it mean to be compassionate? Hmm? What is that? Merciful. I cannot understand you, Joe. Merciful. To be merciful. You're looking at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> to be merciful. Okay. Yeah, to be merciful. But uh, but um, how how is it expressed? What kind of well, how do you express mercy in this case? Is is it all the same? Is it all just synonymous? Huh? Sympathize. To sympathize. Very good, Sophia. To sympathize. Okay. So it is the expression of sympathetic pity. Okay. I think that's the best combination uh, of of uh, words to put together to describe what compassion means. Compassion is sympathetic pity. Because you can be, you can pity somebody without sympathizing with with that person. You say, ah, oh, "Oh, I'm sorry, you know, uh, sorry that happened to you," but you're not really connected. You're not, you're not empathizing with uh, the misery of another. Okay, so uh, compassion means sympathetic pity. It means a genuine concern. A genuine concern for the sufferings or the miseries of others and that you want to go out of your way to alleviate that suffering you want to go out of your way to do something about the misery of another that is compassion now that is what we are asked to understand today as being the kind of heart that Jesus has that Jesus has a compassionate heart that Jesus is a compassionate God have mercy I mean God bless you okay that Jesus is not only somebody who takes pity on our misery but actually goes out of his way like the Good Shepherd to find us to look for us to minister to us to attend to our needs the needs of our soul and the needs of our uh, uh, bodily well-being as well okay? that is the kind of compassion uh, that the sacred heart of Jesus has and and let's 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 uh, let's analyze what is it that he has compassion on us for hmm? what is it that that he he, he he feels compassion for us for What would be the biggest thing that he actually had expressed compassion for us for? Uh, hmm? Sorry, Joe? Our sins. our sins. Our sins. See, it is our sinfulness primarily that God has expressed compassion uh, for us for. And how did he express that? What did he do? Uh... As, as the major work of his life on earth to show that compassion for us what did he do huh? okay he he died for us right? he died for us he saved us from that sin you see compassion <laughs> means taking that sympathetic pity and concern and trying to alleviate the situation of the person you're 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 having uh, compassion for right so he did just that right going all the way to the extent of allowing himself to be offered as a sacrifice to save us from our sins that was the extent of the compassion of jesus to give up his own life and so um jesus is not only a forgiving god jesus goes out of Perhaps the, the mold of just, okay, uh, you're sorry, okay, uh, I'm done with you, good riddance, and just don't come back, right? No, our Lord is not like, like that, right? Our Lord forgives us from our sins, but expresses every time he expresses, yes, Eva, a, a genuine desire to help us reform our lives, okay? 
So besides forgiving us from our sins, dying on the cross and forgiving our sins, where again, every time we commit sin, where can we go to ask forgiveness? Confession. Confession, right? He already died for our sins on the cross, yet he still offered a continuous mechanism and means to keep forgiving us every time we fall into sin and care to ask for forgiveness. And he instituted for us the sacrament of confession. Okay? So you can see there that our Lord did not only forgive us one time, but he continues to forgive us and offer us consolation for our sins. He offers us the comfort and consolation that we can get through the sacrament of confession. The consolation that, you know, despite our weaknesses, our Lord does not tire in forgiving us from our sins. The consolation that no matter how wretched we feel we are, and we know we are, we know that we have a recourse in confession to seek forgiveness from our sins. Right? That is the best expression of the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And look at how this parable concludes. Again, this is just the expression of, of the reality of people who, who find things that are lost. Right? Something that's so precious to them, like in this case, lost sheep. So precious to that shepherd that he rejoices for finding it. He rejoices. And our Lord tells us the same thing. There's more joy in heaven over the repentance of one sinner rather than the righteousness of all the others. It's as though, it's as though the chorus of angels and all the saints in heaven would, would be clapping their hands in standing ovation every time one sinner goes to confession and makes a very, very sincere and repentant confession eh? over somebody who is goody-goody and who thinks so highly of himself, I'm not that bad, I'm not really that bad, you know, I don't kill people, I don't, you know, I don't do, uh, I don't steal like that Pharisee, remember that story of that Pharisee and the, who was there in front of the uh, uh, temple and, and telling God in a very cocky way, proud way uh, proud of himself you know i give uh, fights to the poor i do this i do that unlike that pub, uh, 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 sinner over there public sinner over there who and then the guy in the back the, the publican says i'm sorry lord you know forgive me a sinner okay there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and he's truly truly sorry for his sins and asks sincerely to be forgiven for it than all the rest who are goody goody who call lord lord huh? like the gospel we were reading the other time right who 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 in front of other people appear to be holy but deep inside is worse than a rotten tomato right because of his sinfulness well our lord today is inviting us through this feast he is showing us his heart and he is telling us, look, look, I have a compassionate heart. I have compassion for your misery, for your sinfulness. Come to me, come to me and ask sincerely for forgiveness from your sins. And I will be ready to embrace you like the lost sheep. I'll be ready to take you on my shoulder so that I can carry you to safer grounds I'm ready to take you back into the fold of the church into the fold of our of my family now, this is what our Lord tells us all the time by showing us today's feast by giving us today's feast to recall the compassionate heart of Jesus so let's remember this uh, every day let us keep this in mind that our Lord is open to receive us in confession and otherwise. And uh, um, it's really up to us. The, the invitation of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is there. It's really up to us to respond to that invitation 
and accept Jesus' offer of compassion and help for the forgiveness of our sins and the betterment of our lives. So today let us give a lot of thanks to God, uh, especially at Mass, okay, for this big grace of confession, the big, uh, the big um, grace of the sacrament that Jesus has given us as an expression of His mercy and compassion and tenderness of heart. Okay, everybody, that's it for us this morning. We're off to Mass. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.